Hi, hi, hi. Excuse me, excuse me. Hello, everybody. Nat Caulfield here for Overview, your window into the world of home video. And we're here for the Friday Night Crash right here on Tower Video on Sunset Boulevard. And we're going to dig into the psyches of people and find out what they're renting and why. Come on, let's do it. Shall we? Come on. You know we will. Hi, what's your name? My name is Mike. Hi, Mike. Nat Caulfield here. We're asking people what they're renting tonight. What do you rent? A lot of old westerns. Would you get a little more specific than that? John Wayne westerns. A lot of John Wayne movies. You're yeah. feeling in a mood for the Duke. Absolutely, yeah, I love the Duke. Everybody loves the Duke. You can't help but love him. Yeah, he's my favorite. Absolutely the greatest. Oh, he was a good actor. He certainly was. And a big man. He was great. He and was a good man. Very fine The Duke. Man. Great American. A great American and a great person for the world. Absolutely great. He was just the best man that ever lived. He certainly was. He was a great man. Yes, he was. He surely was. Now, what films are you going to watch here tonight, Mike? Um, I'm not sure. Probably True Grit tonight. Oh, True Grit's a good one. That's with uh, Catherine Hepburn? Uh, no. Kim Darby. Kim Darby. Oh, right. she's a good woman. Yes, she she's is. She's a good American. Yes, she And is. a great actress. I guess she is. Oh, yeah. boy, you're going to have a good time. Well, thanks a lot, Mike. Enjoy it. Thank you very much. No, thank you. Okay. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye looked for in here I haven't found is High and the Mighty. You know, I've looked for that myself, and I don't find it anywhere. I don't know what's going on. Go on. I've, I've never seen it in any of these stores, yeah. any of them, Tower or any of them. It's a big mystery, whatever happened to that film. What do you think, Doris? <laughs> Doris, he doesn't know. you got to answer. Come on, Doris. Dad said you got to answer. What do you think happened to the High and the Mighty? What do you think happened to the High and the Mighty? She won't answer, and I don't blame her a bit. I'm running out of Africa. Oh, boy, you got a whole night ahead of you then. Yes. It's a pretty long film. Yes, I heard it's really good. Who'd you hear it from? Oh, everybody, I guess, everybody who went to see it said it was beautiful. Didn't they? Didn't they? I just never got to it, though. It just seemed so long. Me either, so I've got it now at home so I can eat and watch it at the same time. What do you plan to do, a big shopping right now? <laughs> well, maybe. I'm going to get some microwave popcorn and go home, put my feet up, and... You're having a totally electronic yeah. night. You're really okay. having an electronic Let me ask you this, Marcia. What did you do before you used to rent videos on Friday nights? Go to the movies, go out to eat. Go when just bring a, bring a couple of microwave dinners with you in a bag? <laughs> That's right. Go to the drive-ins. <laughs> oh, boy, those were the yeah. days, weren't they? Beer and chicken at the drive-in. Uh, oh, forget it. You're teasing me, Meryl. No, I'm not. We're going to the movies. Jeez. And then we're going to come home and watch movies. What are you, addicts? We're going to wake up and watch movies. What's, what's going on? No social problems, that kind of thing? Well, I don't know. My boyfriend's right there. Ask him about social problems. <laughs> Little problem back there? <laughs> oh, for goodness sake. Elmore, we're finding out what people are renting tonight. What are you renting? Um, uh, Crossroads. Crossroads? What, what's that all about anyway? Ralph Macchio? No, it's about the blues. Well, it says Ralph Macchio. Don't bite my head off, Elmore, for God's sake. It's about the blues. And, and, and what's it all about? It's about uh, a guy who sells his soul. That's awful, isn't it, when that happens? Yeah, it's terrible. That can be a real disaster in a person's life when they sell their soul. Don't do it at home. Really don't. Just rent the movie. And why are you renting this movie? You've, you've, have you ever seen it? I got the blues. You got the blues right now? What's wrong? Tell us. It's private. Personal matter. You sent a letter to Freddie Bartholomew? He sent me an autographed picture, and oh. I loved it. What did you say? Confidentially, Tom doesn't have to know about this, Sally. What did you say to Freddie? Your performance in David Copperfield was touching, and I cried. And then I got the autographed picture back. And how old were you at the time? I was about um, eight, I guess. You were eight years old, and how old was Freddie? Freddie must have been about uh, seven. <laughs> oh, for goodness. So even then, you, you, you dug the young guys, huh? You <laughs> bet. Ah, oh, Sally's a cooker. She really is. Do you rent a lot of videos? Uh, quite a few, yeah. Uh -huh. And you uh, enjoy it? Yeah, I average about, I guess, 10 a week. What? So many people are renting a lot more videos than my wife and I because we rarely get out. Do you gals rent a lot of videos together? A few. You pretty much spend almost every waking hour of the day together, don't you? All Fridays and Saturday nights, we're here renting videos of gorgeous men. I'm renting Santa Claus, Santa Claus, the movie. And what did you do? Just shove it in your handbag so nobody would know? Yes. <laughs> that happens when people rent. They get too tired to wait in the line. They shove it in their handbag, especially Santa Claus, the movie. <laughs> well, actually, I bought a movie. I've been trying to get into the spirit of Christmas and, you know, candy canes. And I went out and I bought... Uh, Santa Claus the movie. <laughs> oh, goodness, goodness, yes, goodness. That's right. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big Santa Claus fan. I, I do believe in him, and uh, I'm a big supporter. Oh, I don't blame you, Craig, because honest to God, he's real. He really is. Has video changed your life? What did you used to do on Friday nights before home videos were such a big thing? And they really are, aren't they? A big, big thing? Well, I used to watch whatever was available on TV. Then I reproduced, and I needed a VCR because I have to stay home on Friday nights now. 
All right, you've gone a little too far. Thank you so much, Scott. Bye-bye. you not seen this movie? I have not. No, I have not. Please, do yourself a favor and do it tonight. You don't have to ask me twice. Sally says please to me. I melt. <laughs> I really do. I want to do it. Why do you love Star Trek so much? What is it about Star Trek that makes everybody so darn happy? Oh, just that there's a chance of hope for the future. I think you're falling in love with me, aren't you? Yes, the way I, you're am. Looking at me. I am. Do you see the way she's looking at me? She's falling in love with me. Let me ask you this story. Do you rent a lot of movies? Yes, I rent quite a few movies a week. Uh-huh. And what do you do? Bring guys over and make a little Bristol cream and watch them? That's right. That is what I do, as a matter of fact. I think I'm falling in love with you now, Dory. <laughs> then it's mutual, Mac. It's not. <laughs> That's all right, Donnie. Anyway. <laughs> Let me ask you this, Brenda. What's the most fascinating thing about being a manager of a video store? Boy, you must see the whole sea of humanity come in and out of here all day long. What's the most fascinating thing? What's the most fun thing? What lightens you up so much when you see when you work here? Closing. Closing. Hi. I'm Ken Yaz, and when I'm not using the Editroid here, I'm poking my nose into the latest technology, recreational technology. Now, when magazines review video cameras, they usually throw out a lot of technical mumbo-jumbo and rate the cameras anywhere from good to better. Well, what we want to do is shoot home movies with those video cameras. So let's do just that, using a group of the more popular cameras on the market today. Here's the CCD M8U from Sony, called the Handycam. It's certainly one of the most convenient cameras on the market. The Handycam is about the size of a 35 millimeter still camera, uses an eight millimeter video cartridge, no larger than an audio cassette, and is virtually idiot proof. Only a few controls are available. In fact, in order to turn it on, you have to snap up the lens shade in front. How's that for simplicity? The eight millimeter Handycam is the Brownie snapshot camera of video. One of its strongest features is its ease of operation. Just point and shoot. The Handycam uses a fixed lens instead of a zoom and provides a close-up, medium, and wide-shot focus position. Here's a shot I'd like to zoom in on, but can't. That's the price you pay for unprecedented portability. Take a look at the in-camera editing. Seamless transitions between shots because of flying erase heads, a professional feature. But watch out when you start shooting those carefully composed scenes. Even with one button operation, you can mistakenly leave it in record instead of standby and bring home footage like this. Checking the viewfinder display will remedy this problem. Even though there is no shoulder brace, the Handycam is so light you can still get a steady pan and even shoot as you walk. Not a bad picture for such a small camera. By the way, all the footage in our comparison has been through several edits, so it's not quite as sharp as what you'll see on your TV right after shooting. The Handycam also handles contrast extremes pretty well. There are still some compromises with this new tape format, including overall image grain and color bleeding. Check out the red shirt. Here again, I'd like to zoom in on all the flexing for a little variety, but I can't. Eight millimeter is the format of the future. It has a price tag of the future too. Only a yuppie like this could afford it. Over $1,000 for the camera and separate playback unit. For those of you still clinging to Betamax, the Sony Super Beta Movie uses a standard Betamax cassette, has a zoom lens, and uses a CCD chip instead of a tube for superior image quality. All these features for half the price of 8mm. The camera rests on your shoulder for rock-solid tilts and pans. Overall image quality and contrast range is excellent. As with all video cameras, I'd stay away from heavy backlight, no matter what extra buttons the manufacturer provides to compensate for this problem. In normal operation, the Sony BMC660 handles these situations better than most, pulling out some foreground detail. The Super Beta provides good color fidelity and reproduces images with excellent resolution and clarity. Plus, it edits smoothly in camera. Zoom lens, glare-resistant CCD pickup device, autofocus, and auto-irising features were winning advantages here. Generally, there is less video noise with the BMC660 and less color bleed. This camera makes fine pictures for the beta believer or the video file, and the price is right.
The Panasonic PV200 Omnimovie has some professional features, like an electronic viewfinder for precise focusing and framing, a front-mounted shotgun microphone, and zoom lens. Plus, it uses a standard VHS cassette for up to two hours worth of recording. The big difference you'll notice with this camera is the electronic viewfinder, which previews contrast and light levels before you shoot. The two Sony products had optical viewfinders. With this camera, from a lighting standpoint, what you see is what you get. As with the Handycam, the record switch on the PV200 is vague. When I thought I was in standby, I was actually recording a great 15-minute shot of this chair. The sound makes up for what the on-off button lacks. The Panasonic has the best sound quality of any camera we tested. The shotgun mic discriminates well, and the frequency response, capturing the bass, mid-range, and treble, is good. Listen to this. The picture doesn't rate as highly. Overall image clarity and color fidelity for this camera were below the beta system. And in-camera editing was sloppy because there were no flying erase heads. See that? Here's another. Pardon my professional camera work. It's not a snapshot camera, and you may miss a few shots because there are several buttons to push before the camera is up and running. The JVC Video Movie is a small format video camera which uses a tilting electronic viewfinder, has full playback from the camera using these controls in front, and takes a 20-minute miniature cassette that fits into a casing for playback in your VCR. This camera has a lot going for it. It's small like the 8mm and has an auto everything button, focus, iris, and white balance. So it performs like a snapshot camera. But it's sophisticated too, with manual overrides, CCD imaging, spacious electronic viewfinder, and onboard playback through the eyepiece or a TV set. It may have too many controls. In certain situations, we were groping for a button and covering the microphone. There's one feature you may never use, fade to white. As for editing, the JVC left something to be desired. Nor was low light capability or color fidelity especially impressive for a solid state camera that should make vastly superior pictures to its tube counterpart. The GRC7, as it's called, has a way to go in this department. Also, the video movie will turn out to be more expensive than its competition. Two hours worth of footage will end up costing $30, the priciest blank tape outlay we've surveyed. Seen enough? Me too. Here are the contenders, with list prices and some tape costs for each. Which one is the best? Well, in this changing market, after much consideration from many angles, size, features, picture quality, and format, currently... My pick of the four, the JVC video movie. But let's put it to the acid test. If a video camera can reproduce pictures under these conditions, you know you've got a versatile piece of hardware. For overview, this is Ken Yaz. Dentine makes it nicer to be together. Just the two of us, you and I. Share that clean, tangy taste. Not even mouthwash can freshen your breath better than when you're chewing Dentine. Just